Um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Manan and I'm going to present my final year thesis titled uh, Speculative Design, Handwriting in the Post-Digital Era. <coughs> now, this thesis is uh, roughly divided into three different segments. The first segment deals with the incidents in the past that motivated me to deal with the subject of handwriting. The present, I, I saw a problem and a paradox which I explained a, a bit more in thesis as well. And then taking this problem further, I devised a concept or an idea using speculative design to deliver a concept for the future. Now, um, I, I am a mechanical engineer by profession and it seems very weird that the mechanical engineer would choose this topic of handwriting but it is. Actually, the first real incident why I came to, towards this topic of uh, handwriting was when I was working as a young engineer in Germany. Uh, as all young engineers have to do, they have, we have to give drawings to our seniors for them to review. And one of the really uh, weird things that I saw them doing for checking was that they would print out the drawings, uh, they would put them on their table, they would uh, write on them with their red pen, as you can see here, and then they would just scan it then back and then give them back to me and that, that really puzzled me. Uh, why not use a PDF program? Why not annotate it there in the software and then just email it back? Why go through this whole process of just, just uh, printing and then scanning it back? And then I, I forgot about it for the reason because most of my colleagues were quite old. And I thought that maybe they aren't used to the digital technologies as us young people are. But then three years later, I came to Estonia as a student of design and engineering, and I again saw something really, really peculiar. Most of my my uh, class fellows had their um, uh, had their journals and notebooks on which they would write their and plan their their whole uh, all the events that they had. One of the really peculiar things that I saw was that after the start of every semester they would sit down and religiously jot down the whole timetable for the semester, for the whole five months, in one day. And that's like uh, boggled my mind because why would you do that? You already have this digital file available. Why would you go through this process when you already have this, this calendar available in your Google Apps or your Apple calendar? I asked one of my friends and then um, they, they said it, it just makes it more real. And taking this, I made handwriting uh, the topic of my thesis and I wanted to find out what makes it so special what makes it so unique that people who are used to it can't really get away from it so writing indeed has a lot of uh, cognitive benefits that I found out in my research which is quite extensive uh, it range from neurological to physiological to learning development in uh, children and finally to actual creative process but for the purpose of this presentation, I would like to present just three key differences that would build this thesis a bit forward. The first, as I found out, was the encoding versus the storage hypothesis. You see that uh, in, a, in a 2014 study by Muller and Oppenheimer, they uh, gathered two groups of students together. One group was allowed to take notes by longhand. Um, they were shown different TED Talks and they were allowed to take notes by longhand, writing by pen. And one group was allowed to take notes by, uh, on the laptop. And both of the groups were allowed to review the notes later. And after the review, they were asked the questionnaires. And the surprising thing that they found was that the, the, the group of students who actually reviewed or who actually wrote with longhand actually performed a lot more be better on questions which were related which were conceptual, which related to actual cognitive thinking. And this is, this is here why I want to explain why it happens. It happens because when someone is speaking and we are taking notes, then we are actually following the whole thought process that is occurring, the, the words that are uttering by the mouth of the teacher. And then we want to note them down, but our writing speed is not exactly as fast as the person that is speaking is. So Inadvertently, we try to condense and summarize the information that is coming, and unconsciously, we understand it a lot more. So, writing 
longhand. Indeed, it helps you understand the content of the subject that is being spoken. Longhand, on the other hand, it's, it's much more faster. So when somebody is speaking, you are able to follow it much more, and, in, and the circuit does not follow through your brain. So there is something lost in between. The second thing that I want to present is actually the, the thought versus the action, or rather the input versus the output. The question that I asked before, that why is it that the people want to actually prefer annotating on the, on the actual hard paper, it is because when we are annotating, it's, it's a lot of cognitive demanding tasks. We are taking in the information from a drawing, we are processing it, and then we are writing it down. The thought process that is occurring, the calculation that is occurring in our mind, is not as fast as if we want to uh, jot it down with the digital handwriting. So the thought, that is the input that is coming, is not really balanced. But in the case of handwriting, we are actually gliding our hand. And it's balancing, it's balanced. The slowness, deliberation of the thought that is occurring is actually being balanced by the slow movement of the hand that is being, uh, that is um, jotting down on the, on the paper. And that is actually uh, why this, this, there is this uh, theory of flow or being in the zone because our body and mind always tries to keep their, itself in harmony and in balance. So our mind and body is always trying to keep the, the process that is incoming, the input, always balanced with the output that is outgoing. And that is one of the reasons, uh, another curious thing I found was that why some writers such as George R. R. Martin, uh, the writer of Game of Thrones, actually prefer to use something like an old uh, word processor on a PC. It is because they have already formulated everything in their head. They're all, they have already the word, the dialogues, the characters in their head. And what they're doing right now is just putting it down there. It's just pouring it out. Handwriting would not follow the speed that is their imagination is occurring. So that's why they use a, a word processor. The third thing that I want to present is the difference between personal and public. You see, writing is a very intensely personal thing. In all of my interviews, I found out that if a person was told that, okay, something, you, your, your work has to be presented to a bunch of people, how would you present it? What medium would you use? Everyone would say, okay, we will use the digital medium, we will not use our handwriting. Because handwriting is intensely personal. It exposes your personality, it bears yourself out. And that is why children and even adults write things, uh, write their names on objects just to make them their own. We don't print them out and put the stickers on them. Because that can belong to anyone. But when we write it down, it makes it uniquely ours. And that is another reason why why people use journals and diaries in their own hand because it makes them uniquely them, uh, theirs. So, moving on to the present, you would think that, uh, that there are so many advantages for handwriting as I, I explained before. Why wouldn't it be that the handwriting is not as prevalent as it is? But think about it, how many ways do you think that handwriting can be uh, brought from the physical world to the digital world. You have all these different ways. You have a keyboard, scanner, different types of styluses. You can even take a picture and then put it down in the, in the digital realm. But what about the other way around? What if you want to put something from the digital medium to the physical medium of writing? There is only one object that is, that is being used since the advent, commercially available, and that is a printer. The problem is that the current trend is only focused in one direction. Everything that is real in this world is being transferred to the virtual right now. That is the current technological trend. And this is creating a very big paradox here. On one hand, we have a group of people who are, who are concentrating on their diaries and on their journals. On the other hand, we have a group of people who are only using the digital, the, the digital media. And that is highlighted actually in the, in the statistics. Moleskin, the very famous uh, designer uh, brand of uh, diaries and journals actually reported, has been reporting consistent increasing revenues for the past five years and their revenue for 2015 was 25% more. But on the other hand, we see that the, in the UK, the survey was conducted in, by a 
company called Lockmill, and they concluded that one in six adults haven't written in the past six months. And this is a paradox. How is it that some people are writing more and yet we have people who have never written? And move, and then we, we think about the future. This is the present and the, the third segment, the future. How is it that the, we can define about the future? How is it that we can know about it? Uh, we have some reasonable theories presented by, for example, Carlotta Perez, the theory of technological paradigms, which states that um, technological innovation occurs in discrete cycles. And these cycles are predictable. We had the, we had the revolution in industry by when Ford uh, put the assembly line for the Model D, and that started the assembly line revolution. We had the revolution when uh, the microprocessor was invented in uh, the Silicon Valley. And now we are in the maturity of this phase of this uh, ICT revolution, but what about the future? From the literature we can know that there is, there is a very high probability that the future, the next technological revolution will be in the realms of biotechnology and nanotechnology. So in short, the trend that is currently existing will reverse. Everything that is in the digital will come to the physical. And we already see that this, this happening right now with the Oculus Rift and the trend that is emerging with, the, with augmented reality and everything. So now I know what the future is probably going to be, but I don't know how do I deal with it. And that is where I get help from Anthony Dunn and Fiona Raby and their book called uh, Speculative Everything. You see, in Speculative Everything, Anthony Dunn and Fiona Raby say that designers are mostly concerned today with making things that are already existing technology more convenient, more sexier, and more consumable. But these guys, they, they don't think of technology or uh, they don't think of design as a medium for generating things. Rather, they think about uh, design as a tool to generate ideas. Ideas about possible futures. Futures that people would or would not want. For them, design is a means to spe speculate how things could be, or rather how things should be. And the way they do it is by this. The present to future is not a straight line. Rather, it's a cone. And the biggest um, and the possible uh, cone highlights is the, is the possible future. And in the possible future, we have everything that is either possible by science, uh, or rather we can uh, conclude that everything that is not possible by science, for example, uh, perpetual motion is not possible by science, precognition is not possible, uh, possible according to science, everything else is included in this possible future. But then there is this plausible future. And this plausible future is dealt in alternate different scenarios in which where there are some there, there can be a catastrophic event or there can be different events that alter the shape of the human development in a very significant way. For example, the, there is a nuclear war. Uh, what if we make contact with an intelligent alien life form? What if uh, uh, Trump becomes the president of the United States of America? All of these are like. Uh, plausible futures, but then the, the, the part where current designers most deal with is the probable future. And this is where we know what things are going to be. We know cars are going to be autonomous. We know that AI is going to replace jobs. We know that robotics is going to disrupt the labor industry. But how do we deal with it? There is this middle ground between probable and plausible future, and that is where speculative designers operate. What is preferable? I, I, that's quite a debatable word, but right now the preferable future is dictated by either governments or the industry who dictate that how the, the future should going to be. What if people had the ability to think about the future? What if designers consult with people, their specialists, to find out that if they can make uh, different scenarios or futures that can, that can actually alter the course 
and think about it. So I had the, the brief for myself, which is uh, use speculative design to develop a writing medium in for the post-digital uh, future, obviously the, the era of nanotechnology and biotechnology, that enables handwriting yet still integrates the information technology that has happened and develop possible scenarios for that. So I developed different characteristics that should be incorporated into the, into the media of the future that I wanted to develop. The first one is that whatever that media is going to be, it should be paper or something similar to paper. You see, because paper is actually not just a medium for observation. Unlike um, screens, which only give visual input, paper gives us input in four senses. We can smell the paper, we can touch the texture of the paper, we can hear the rustling of the paper. Paper is unique to everyone. A car mechanic writing on paper will have stains and smell of oil on, uh, on his diary. A young girl would have the smell of her lotion. In fact, paper tells stories about each person. It does not just convey information like a screen. The second thing I want to incorporate is the power of media. Uh, or rather pictures, how they can enrich the experience of, a, of the static handwriting. So I tried out different scenarios. I wondered what if we have the ability to seamlessly transfer the digital images from our, our digital media to the physical medium of paper. And I thought, okay, what if I write a letter with a paper and uh, with a picture? And this is where I wrote a letter to my mother on my 29th birthday. And the picture on the top shows my, the first birthday I ever had uh, as a young person with all my family gathered. How would it mean, what would it mean that if, how would you change your travel diary? How would it alter that? You can put pictures on it seamlessly to show the experiences that you had while you were traveling. And finally, the third characteristic that I want to bring out is the concept of layers. Now, designers are already familiar with the concept of layers uh, in Photoshop and everything, but I want to give an example from uh, an actual work that uh, my professor did. And you see, writing, when we, we are doing creative writing, it actually follows discrete paths. It actually follows discrete uh, processes. The first is the brainstorming section, where we, are, where we are actually accumulating information. The information is haphazard. It's not very concrete. It's not very well-defined. It's going everywhere. But then, the second process is consolidation, where we gather our thoughts and the final outcome is starting to emerge. And the final outcome is much more concise, it's much more um, small, and it much, has much less noise as compared to all the other previous versions. So, even though these, these pages on a diary exist linearly, in actual functionality, they should be in layers. Each layer is successively building on top of each other to, to make uh, the final product. And that is why it should have storage and it should have the ability, whatever the medium is, to go beyond the layers and, uh, in any layer that you want. So the final concept that I want to present is a digitally augmented paper and its conceptualization embodiment called Pensive. It's a, this diary, uh, A4 size, about 120 pages. And I made a short video in order to explain how, how this works. Thank you.
expensive is that the index page is actually a link to all the books and all the storages that you have inside here, for example. In page one, I have random scribbles, which is just the title page of the, of the diary that I have for random notes. On page number five, I have books, all the, all the books that I, have, I, I show here. And on page three, I have this work notebook, which I can go to. So if I go to page uh, two and three and then find out the, the personal diary and then work diary, these two are just showing the title pages of both of my diaries. If I want to go inside one level deeper, I just put my hand down there and swipe it all up. It instantly transforms it into the work diary. The whole diary, the actual, converts into the work diary. And uh, I created different, uh, tested out on three different scenarios uh, with three different people. The first one uh, is Yonno, who's a creative designer. How would he use it in his uh, daily work? So. The first thing that we see is his, is his title page, and then he has distributed it into according to different projects that are that is he's doing. He takes images from his uh, his uh, physical uh, LCD screen and is able to put them on his uh, diary pencil. Then he's able to annotate them and then um, change them according to their according to how he wants them to be. And then finally, he, paper enables him to collaborate and discuss with different uh, his colleagues in order to find out what the possible changes can be. The second scenario is that of a Carolina, a fifth grade student. Uh, she's currently doing her homework and uh, on pensive, and then uh, she remembers that she has to write her diary, so she turns back to her title page and uh, she has her friends and the segments that she has made according to, according to her wishes. Um, she then uh, remembers that she took a selfie with her very good friend. She puts her cell phone down and then transfers the image to the physical diary and then she is writing the story of her day. The third scenario is of uh, uh, Manal. Uh, Jim enthusiast and a voracious book reader who really likes to read a lot. Um, right now we can see that uh, he's in gym and because he has the ability to uh, put images in his diary seamlessly, he has the perfect form for exercises that he is doing and he's able to record all the weights that he has progressed. He then goes home and then uh, gets in bed and does some uh, late night reading and he finds out that he has a lot of choice between two different things and he, then he chooses speculative everything and uh, zooms into the book finding out how the cover and the cover actually changes